On this video, I want to talk about the dip switch adjustments on carrier variable speed furnaces, like carrier infinity furnaces, carrier models, um, 59 TP6 variable speed furnaces, or any other carry manufacturers like Keepright, Bryant. Um, they're kind of all the same. Uh, they all follow the same principle. So by learning one, you will be able to do uh, the adjustment for um, all these type of furnaces. Um, so here, um, I put a picture here where it shows you how the dip switches look like, the location of the dip switches. This is a picture of the uh, carrier infinity furnace control board. As you can see in the picture, we have three dip switches here. SW1 has eight switches. Then we have SW2 and SW3, which are for the air conditioner and the continuous fan mode, um, uh, which I will discuss about this more in another video. Uh, there's also another dip switch called SW4, which you can see in this picture is kind of right here, um, but it's easy to find it, so it's not a big deal. And uh, so today I'm just going to focus on SW1 uh, and uh, what are these switches for, what exactly they do. Um, it's really important uh, installing a furnace is not just about putting a furnace together, Commissioning the furnace at the end of your installation is the most important part of it to avoid uh, free service calls in the future and also make the system to work uh, the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to focus on SW1 and SW4 and we'll go through each switch one by one. SW1 switch number one. Uh, factory set is an off position. So if you turn it on, it will retrieve seven stored status code while all R wire is disconnected. So it simply means that you have to disconnect the R wire from the R terminal in the furnace control board, and you turn the switch on, and it will retrieve seven uh, past seven error codes that the furnace had, because there are some cases that you guys go for a service call, and while you're there, the system is working, but the customer complained that, <coughs> sorry, the customer complained that uh, the system was not working properly, it was shutting off on him, and, um, and while you're there, it's working, it's kind of acting up, but uh, while it's working, you really don't know what you're looking for. So by retrieving these uh, error codes, you might get some ideas of what uh, the problem was, and um, you take it from there. So that's for that. SW1 switch number two. If you turn that on, it's a uh, fact person is on off position. If you turn it on while the SW4 number two is off. So SW1 number two has to turn on while SW4 number two is off. It will lock the system on the low heat mode. Uh, you should do this when you're commissioning your system uh, for a few reasons. You have to um, read your temperature rise. It's very important guys always measure the temperature rise it tells you a lot of things about the system uh, you've got to do that and you've got to measure the temperature rise in the low heat and the high heat and in case of having a module in your furnace and intermediate heat as well uh, there are some um, uh, there's some important things about um, how to properly measure your temperature rise one the blower motor compartment uh, door has to be closed while you're measuring your temperature rise because if you leave it open because some guys you know they kind of try to push that safety switch or try to put a magnet on it to leave the system um, on and working so they can do their measurements but if you do that uh, it will uh, mess with the static pressure uh, in your duct system and um, and 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 you will not get a proper reading because the static pressure is really important factor and affects uh, the airflow. And then once the airflow is affected, uh, you're not gonna have a proper reading on your temperature rise. So you shut that door. And uh, the other important thing is that you've got to uh, do your measurements uh, as close as possible to the furnace, but make sure you're not gonna stick in your thermometer uh, above the heat exchanger or close to the heat exchanger because that radiant heat that coming from the heat exchanger will give you a false reading. So stay away from the heat exchanger but as close as possible to the furnace. 
and you do uh, you you measure your uh, temperature your supply temperature you measure your return temperature by deducting to these two numbers you will get your temperature rise uh, a good temperature rise is normally between 45 to 75 degrees fahrenheit but it's always written on the sticker on the nameplate on the furnace it tells you what the temperature rise has to be for that specific furnace and uh, yeah yeah that's for the temperature rise and i'm just gonna um talk about something else that is not related to this video but it's uh it's it's good to know i know it's hard i know it's time consuming and uh, a lot of people out there i would say 99.9% .9 .9 of technicians out there especially installers uh they don't do this they don't do commission the system properly but every single furnace on the rating plate it has uh, a rated output um that uh, kind of tells you what's what what's what the beat you is supposed to be on this furnace uh, you can kind of um control uh the furnace beat you by adjusting the gas pressure by increasing it or decreasing it um but first you have to know what's the actual uh beat you uh what's the actual beat the furnace is working on um you can do that by clocking the meter and uh, use that formula to uh, kind of um, calculate what's the actual BTU of the furnace. And uh, if it's not close to the uh, rated number on the sticker of the furnace, uh, you have to kind of adjust the gas pressure to, to get as close as possible to that number. Uh, your gas pressure should never be above 3.8 inches water column and it should never be below 3.2 inches water column. It should always be within that range. And uh, it's time consuming, I know, but it, believe me, it's, it's good to do. And it will save you a lot of headaches down the road. Uh, that's that. Then um, SW1 switch number three. It's really important. Whenever you have a bypass humidifier, you have to turn this switch on because whenever you have a bypass humidifier that hot air that is coming through that flexible duct that is connecting uh, the humidifier to your supply duct that hot air is coming through that flexible pipe into the humidifier back into your return duct and will lead into uh, uh, an inc uh, increased temperature in your return duct so your return duct uh, temperature um, uh, it's going to be more than what it's supposed to be. And now we have an overheated return temperature, which is very close to the furnace and is going back to the furnace and will cause an overheating or a high limit trip on the furnace. Uh, by turning the SW3 switch number, SW1 switch number three on, you will increase the speed of the uh, blower motor by 18% for the low and the intermediate heat. And it will also increase the speed of the inducer draft motor by 15%. Again, having a bypass humidifier, SW1 switch number three on, period. SW1 number four, factory set is on. But if you turn it off, why the SW3 is off? So imagine we don't have a bypass humidifier. So we, don't, we do not need to turn the SW1 switch number three on. So it's an off position from factory but you turn off the SW1 switch number four. What it does, it will increase the speed by 10% for low heat, 7.5% for intermediate heat, and 17.5% for high heat. Uh, and obviously, if you leave it off, uh, it will kind of decrease the, 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 um, um, the speed of the blower motor by these percentages. And uh, that, 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 that's just for more comfort uh, but in most cases, it will cause for the system to kind of overheat. I've seen it a lot. SW1 switch number four, um, the factory setting again is on, but if you turn it off and then you turn on the SW1 switch number three, when you have a bypass humidifier again, this switch has to be on at all times. So if you turn off the SW1 number four and then turn on the SW1 number three, uh, it will increase the speed uh, for the low heat and intermediate heat by 18% and for the high heat only by 10%. That's what, that this setting is what I recommend most of the times when you have a bypass humidifier. Um, 
these two switches again are really important. SW1 switches number three and four and how they work. Focus on this a lot. SW1 number five, um, turn on for having 400 CFM per ton cooling, turn off for having 350 CFM per ton of cooling. I will talk about this more when I'm, when I'm, when I'm gonna talk about SW switch, uh, dip switch SW4 uh, because um, S the switch SW SW4 switch number three kind of work with SW1 switch number five, and I'll tell you how it works just in the uh, next slide. SW1 switch number six. If you turn it on, the system goes for a self component troubleshooting when R wire is disconnected. So simply, you have to disconnect your R wire from the R terminal on the furnace control board, and then you turn the switch on and it will kind of self troubleshoot itself and if there is a part or component is not working or it's uh, kind of a normal closed switch is normal, it got open it kind of um, tells you the LED starts flashing and tells you the error code you find it on your furnace uh, door and then um, you figure you take it from there SW1 switch number 7 and 8 are for blow off delay adjustment between 90 to 180 seconds not that important just leave it to the factory thing, and that's what I always do. Uh, SW2 and 3 again for AC and continuous fan adjustments. And as I said, I will discuss this in another slide. Just a quick point here. Uh, whenever you're adjusting uh, the speed for an air conditioner, do the same adjustment for the continuous fan mode as well. Because I've seen a lot that there, uh, there are some customers um, that uh, they really don't know how to work properly with the thermostat. So they turn the AC on. And then instead of putting a fan on auto, they put it on the fan on. That will mess with the airflow that is required for that specific air conditioner. So by doing this, by setting the continuous fan, the same way they set your air conditioner um, um, settings on the dip switches for the air conditioner, um, if the customer does that by mistake, you're not going to have a problem. Do that. It's good. Uh, Dip switch SW4. SW4 switch number one, leave it, leave it factory setting at all times. Don't touch it. It's on the off position from factory setting. Don't turn it on. If you turn it on, the furnace won't work. I don't know why they put that switch there, but it is what it is. Just, just leave it. Leave it. SW4 switch number two. If you turn that switch on, the system will be locked on the intermittent heat mode. And it also override the SW1 switch number two. What it means is that, if remember, I said, if you turn on the SW1 switch number two, the system will be locked on the low heat mode so you can do your measurements and check the gas pressure, do the temperature, measure temperature rise. But um, if you leave this on and then you also turn on SW4 number two, this will be discarded. Like this switch will override this and the system will be locked on the intermediate heat instead of being locked on the low heat. Um, on the intermediate heat, uh, just one thing that you cannot adjust the gas pressure, like the manifold pressure, while the furnace is working in intermediate heat. It's not adjustable. You can't do that. The only thing that you have to do is to measure the temperature rise on this mode as well. SW4 number three, as I told you, it works with SW1 number five. So if SW4 number three is on, SW1 number five is off, you will have 325 CFM per ton of cooling. That's how much the blower is going to provide you with. If you turn on SW4 number, sorry, turn off SW4 number three and, and also leave the SW1 number five off, you will have 350 CFM per ton of cooling. SW4 number three on, SW1 number five on, you will have 370 CFM per ton of cooling. And finally, SW4 number three off, which is the factory setting, which means that if you do not touch anything on the SW4 uh, dip switch, or you don't do anything with SW4 switch number three, and then you turn on your SW1 switch number five, you will have 400 CFM per ton of cooling, which in most cases, that's what we're looking for. We need 400 CFM per ton of cooling. And uh, yeah, that's about that. I hope that uh, this video could help you guys having a better understanding on these dip switch adjustments. 
And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just write down in the comment below.